everyone uh, <clears throat> today i'm going to discuss about industrial automation okay so uh, most of the people don't know what actually is automation why do we need industry, uh, automation industries right so i want to discuss a basic introduction about automation so that uh, freshers uh, uh, <clears throat> who are presently learning engineering right so they also don't have any idea about automation why do we need automation okay so that's the purpose i'm just uh, giving a basic uh, introduction about automation so that we can uh, easily understand <clears throat> where it is helpful how it is helpful okay so let's start from the beginning a basic uh, introduction i have made one small uh, ppt for that now so for controlling any process process means in your the plants right we are having some machines for manufacturing or making any product right we are having different types of machines for these machines we are using some instruments like uh, measurement measurement instruments or measuring instruments and uh, sensors <coughs> uh, there are different types of sensors right digital and analog so what are digital sensors digital means on or off right one or zero one means on zero means off right for digital it is only zero or one condition whereas for analog it is variable variable means uh, or you can say continuous signal okay which is uh, varying okay increasing or decreasing so like that we have different types of uh, parameters to measure so uh, in analog for example we are having some temperature pressure flow level speed so there are some parameters which we are going to measure right and for digital like there hang some uh, motors pumps lamps heaters sirens buzzers which are going on or off only or different types of sensors like push buttons toggle switches which we are operating to run your process so here there have uh, many methods or many options to control any process right so the first option when there was no automation the first option is like manual control manual control means operator will be controlling the process so one operator can handle a big plant or a big machine no right it's not possible so if i have to for example fill uh, 100 bottles in 30 minutes and i have to fill the exact level in all the bottles is it possible manually by one person in one uh, in 30 minutes not possible and he has to pack it uh, <clears throat> in a box right that is not possible so we need more manpower we need more manpower one has, one has to clean the bottle one has to fill the bottle one has to cap the bottle one has to label the bottle right it takes more time so we are having lot of drawbacks here in manual control and there are many human errors also <clears throat> there are many human errors right so we cannot achieve the accuracy here nowadays what we need is we need accuracy means exact values okay nearest values okay so that we cannot achieve in manual control so to overcome this manual control uh, <clears throat> later we got the second option that is uh, hardwired or relay logic control hard wiring or you can say relay uh, logic uh, i think uh, most of the people knows about relays or relay works even for your understanding okay i am giving one example here below how your relay works so you can see there is one picture here one gif i added here uh, <clears throat> at right side you can see there is one coil okay to this coil i have connected some voltage like 12 volt dc So when the switch is going on or off, okay. When the switch is going on or off, at left side you can see one more uh, lever is moving left and right, okay. When the switch is off, this lever is connected to NC, 
and when the switch is on it is coming to the anode right this connecting to the anode means in relay we are having uh, <coughs> two ends one is a primary end and a secondary end so what is this primary and secondary primary and secondary which is isolated means which is not having any direct connection so there is a gap or you can say isolate isolated <coughs> Okay, so there is an isolation here between this coil and NONC contacts. So in the coil, uh, it's like you know magnetism. The rod, if a coil is winded and it provides some supply, what happens? It generates EMF. That uh, rod acts as a magnet, right? So that's what is happening here in the relay. So when the switch is on, it generates EMF in the coil. Okay, so which is attracting this lever which is uh, <clears throat> connecting to NO, means it is holding with the NO. So when the switch is off, it is deactivating. So it is going back to its previous condition that is to NC. So here we are in two contacts, we are having two contacts, one is NO and NC. NO stands for normally open, NC stands for normally closed. Normally closed means which is already closed. As you can see when the switch is off, it is already closed with the NC. When the switch is on, it is moving that lever. Is changing and is becoming NC and NC becomes NO. Okay, so this uh, relay is also having one pole, or, or in some cases, in uh, some uh, engineers, they also call it as a common. Okay, now, so this is how your relay works when the pole is activated, it attracts that lever, it is changing the position. Okay, so this is how your relay works. So I have added some example here how you can connect the outputs here. Here you can see I connected one example like lamp. So when this is in off condition, this switch is off here. Okay, this NO position is off, so lamp is off. When the switch is on to the coil, this lever is closing with NO, so the lamp is getting on. Right. So this is all your relays activating your output. Okay. So across this pole, I have connected some supply. Okay. Through this, uh, it is providing a supply to the lamp. Say here from PLC, I'm getting set one volt DC only. But for your output, we require how much? 230 volts AC. Like if we are not just connecting lamp or we are connecting any uh, contactor also. Okay. For that also, we need 230 volts AC supply. So at Secondary end, I'm providing on the supply. At primary end, that is at the coil, I'm giving only 24 DC. So what output supply I need that I can provide at the second secondary end. Okay, that's the advantage here with the relay. So that means we are converting this supply. Now, other example like here, what is happening? When you operate the relay, then only your lamp is going on. Right? That means which is connected to the NO contact. If without operating relay, means the switch on, the output should be on. So what I can do is I can connect this lamp to NC. Second example, when the switch is off, so this circuit is already closed. NC circuit will be already closed. So your lamp will be on. When you activate the relay, activate the switch, this is changing, right? So this is going off. It is breaking here. It is going off. Right, so this is how the relay works. So means I can decide the logic how your output should work, and when your output should be on, okay, by using this N O N C contact. So which contact I have to connect the output? So it's not necessary that I should connect to any one uh, contact only. I can use two outputs also. You can see one more example here. <clears throat> I can connect two outputs. To this relay one to nc one to NO. you can see alternately they are going on or off <clears throat> when the switch is off lamp two is on when the switch is on lamp one is on right one is going on and one is going off so this way you can operate this logic using relay okay we can decide the logic so relays are known as electromagnetic switches 
blades are defined as electromagnetic switches and they are used for making logical or control circuits so here they are controlling the logic right so <clears throat> for example you can see uh, i may one example process for making this example uh, process uh, where you can see some tank and there are some sensors or level indicators okay to measure the level so here i am having two walls or inlet walls for adding some raw material into that and after that we have to mix so for that we are having a motor for mixing process and after mixing there is another wall outlet wall for the next process okay so this uh, mix uh, material will go to the next <coughs> location now to control this process we can do previous two methods also right manually or using relay logic so manual means again there are some drawbacks we cannot maintain the exact levels okay there are many human errors and we cannot uh, control the time because it takes more time right in the manual control one person has to check the level one person has to open or close the valve right which is not possible manually okay possible means uh, it takes more time and there will be some human errors right we cannot achieve any accuracy so to overcome that we can use uh, relay logics but what is happening here is it is reducing our human interference but still there are a lot of things to be uh, <clears throat> covered means uh, we have to do a lot of wiring we have to think a lot for making that logic means on the, not just one relay we might be using uh, many number of relays like one relay to another relay another relay to third relay like that so many relays you have to connect for controlling this logic the wiring will be very complex okay that will be one drawback here it requires more wiring more complexity so maintenance will be difficult if any relay is not working or if any wire is loose somewhere identifying that particular location will be very difficult okay so there are many drawbacks here okay so what we can do is uh, <clears throat> means we can uh, apply for few more options that is uh, when the electronics was launched okay so this uh, <clears throat> next option like that is your dedicated electronic control okay is introduced means when you are when you are discussing about electronics we are having some pcb boards we are having the idea of pcb boards on that we are having some chips you see right <coughs> ic chips are there some uh, di <coughs> what is a diodes etc so by make by using this uh, all electronic chips we can design our logic here so what is the advantage of using electronics here we are reducing the space means we are making the things compact right so we if you compare uh, our desktop pc which is having a separate monitor separate uh, devices like cpu unit and uh, <coughs> this uh, keyboard mouse etc all these are separate right it takes more space and if you compare with your laptop laptop is compact compact means your keyboard mouse okay operation monitor is all integrated in a single device right and what is a more compact device we are having nowadays is our mobile means uh, we can say mobile phones or smartphones right so which is more compact right which is a smaller device means we can design our logic within a small board as the advantage here using electronic control and what is another advantage here it consumes very less supply means very less power supply is required here less complexity less maintenance if any chip is damaged you can repair it right so there are many advantages okay and through programming also you can control the process 
we are like we are using microprocessors, microcontrollers. Okay, so this chips we can add and you can make the programming. You can control the logics. But here also we are having one drawback. Means once the logic is uh, designed, we cannot change it. For example, uh, if I am using some <clears throat> phone like uh, uh, iPhone, okay, which is a iPhone uh, older version like uh, 11, okay, but I want to upgrade the same iPhone to 14. Can I upgrade it directly? Not possible, right? So we have to buy that iPhone 14 only because that design will be different. So there is one drawback here, means I cannot make any changes in that PCB board. If you have to change any logic, you have to again redesign it, which will also take more time. There is one drawback here. Means for controlling the previous process, if I have to suppose uh, the condition is like wall one should open first, then the wall two should open. Okay. When this wall one is on, it should fill up to level one. And when the wall two is on, it should fill up to level two. Right. So to control this process, okay, manually with hardware part. Okay. If I want to change the logic here, like I want to start wall uh, wall two first up to level one, then wall one up to level two. In that case, what we need to do is we need to change the wiring, right? Physically, you have to change the wiring. But I don't want to change any wiring. Okay. So what we can do is to overcome this drawback, okay, with that extra changes in the hardware or in the wiring, what we are having is a fourth option that is PLC, Programmable Logic Controller. So what we are doing here is in our PLC, we're having input and output modules, right? Separate input and output modules, and that walls, <coughs> sensors, okay, all these in, uh, all these instruments are connected to your PLC. So these instruments are of input types and output types. So inputs are connected to the input modules like sensors or push buttons, toggle switches, right? These are coming under input modules, so which are connected to the inputs. Okay, then your logic is executed, then it is updating your output module, which is running your outputs like walls, motors, okay, solenoid walls will be there, right, so that will be opening or closing automatically through this command. So you don't need to test the wall to open or close, right. So this thing we can handle here, but how it is doing this task, here for these instruments, like sensors for this hardware, sensor or push button or toggle, whatever the sensor type is there. In PLC, we are using address for that input, for that sensor. So it is called logical address. Okay, I address or Q address, I for inputs, Q for outputs, or in some PLCs it is known as, uh, they are using O as a symbol for outputs. Okay, so this way, we are using different addressing formats, okay. So for L0, sensor L0, there is one address. For sensor L1, another address. For L2, another address. So these logical addresses are used for making any logic in your PLC. Similarly, for the wall 1, wall 2, wall 3, motor, we are using as outputs. So sensors are your input addresses, and walls and motors are your output addresses. So for which sensor, which wall should be on, for which sensor uh, for L L1, and when uh, the sensor should be on or off, then when the motor should be on or for how long it should be on, okay, so that we can decide through a logic. Okay, so here that means in PLC, we are using logical addresses to control the process. Means if I have to change the logic, like a uh, wall two should open first, then wall one, then you don't need to change the wiring in the field. You can simply change the addressing here. You can simply change the addressing in the logic and download. But in a short time, you can change the logic. There's another advantage of using PLC. Okay, so this is how <clears throat> the systems have been upgraded. Okay, 
as the time is running they are still developing more uh, features in plc okay so there's the reason we are using plcs okay and what your plc can do means what are the capabilities of plc sequential logic control that means your logic can be executed sequentially that is step by step then the plc can handle digital signals on off signals and analog signals variable signals right and can also handle timer so what is a timer timer is used for generating delay okay it's generating delay generating delay means like if i start now it means if i give a start command now after 5 seconds your output should be on or off okay so such logics i can develop using timer so in hardware also we are having hardware timers in relay logic in timers also we are having annoyance contacts means after given time or a set time it will change over that is in the hardware but in plc we can use a software timer we are using a software timer suppose in field if i require some 100 timers by using a software timers in plc we are reducing the 70 to 80% of hardware timer requirements okay so less time uh, hardware timers are used in the hardware okay some uh, options will also be there in the industry if you are seen auto and manual mode manual mode means sometime you have to run some process uh, in case you have your plc is in error and you have to run the process in manual mode okay so you have to change over to manual in that case also you need some timers okay so for that we are using some hardware timers okay so <clears throat> here we are re reducing the large number of hardware timer requirements so less wiring and less energy consumption right time saving similarly we are having counters counters means counting number of pulses we are having hardware counter also okay so instead of that we are using a software block here no need of any hardware so directly from the sensor input when the sensor is going on off on off okay on off means there is one pulse so the number of times your sensor is going on off on off that number of times we are counting using a counter okay counter block software block in your plc means plc is doing this many tasks single handedly okay you no need to add any separate module for that then what else you can do in plc as we are using a software right so in that we are having some arithmetical functions also like uh, addition subtraction multiplication okay all these uh, functions we can perform and your plc is also supporting different communication options like uh, uh, rs uh, rs232 rs485 rj45 modbus profibus i think you heard about the different communication options right and uh, <coughs> wifi communication wifi is like a router uh, you can connect okay so different types of communication options are also available with the plc okay and uh, hmi or scada communication is also possible so what is this hmi and scada both are graphics only both are similar but small difference is there that means hmi stands for human machine interface and scada stands for supervisory control and data acquisition so hmi is a small panels which are connected on a uh, <clears throat> uh, big panel okay in that we are having one slot where you can connect this uh, small hmi screen in the big panel near which is connected nearby the machine okay so if for example if i have 10 machines for each machine i'll connect one hmi hmi is a graphics okay graphics means where i can have some animation and where we can display the status of your inputs and outputs means which input is on or off using a color change or dynamic display for example we are having a smartphone right if i don't have any screen means we don't have any screen only that motherboard can we understand what logic is running in that motherboard no right we cannot understand right so 
to make it understand what logic is running, what is the data in that uh, board, in that electronic board, we need some display. So this HMI and SCADA both are working like a display for that process. Means that we can understand what is running in the machine, which input is on or off that we can easily identify. That's the purpose we are using SCADA and HMI. So HMI, 10 machines, 10 HMI modules for each machine, we need one HMI. Whereas SCADA will have a separate control room from where I can monitor all the 10 machine status or values. Means SCADA is just a software. That software we have to install in our PC or in laptop, which are is uh, available like industrial PCs are also there. That also we can install this SCADA at some distance, at some remote uh, location, okay? I can monitor all the process, okay, in SCADA itself. And if I want, if I have to give any uh, control commands from SCADA, from graphics, that also I can give, okay, which is directly going to your PLC. So PLC is controlling your machine, okay. So that also you can control. PID control also you can do. PID means it's a closed loop controlling, okay, which is having a feedback. Okay, so PID stands for Proportional Integral Derivative. So it's actually a mathematical algorithm. I think you have uh, learned uh, <clears throat> these three things in your uh, college time or in your studies, mathematics, in engineering, and during your engineering or uh, in your intermediate also. Okay, means. Uh, Mathematics one, two, three parts are there, right? So integration, derivation. So this is actually a calculation for removing the errors, okay? For controlling your closed loop operation. So means, so here also we are having a hardware PID controller, but in PLC, we don't need that hardware controller. We can simply use a PID software block. So one PLC can perform all these different operations okay apart from that it can also handle real-time functions real-time function means real-time applications time-based application uh, time-based like uh, on some particular date and time like on uh, monday at 9 a.m it should start the machine and by 12 p.m it should stop the machine okay by comparing the time, hours, in hours or minutes, okay? So there's a difference between this timer and this real-time function, okay? That you have to understand. Timer is like generating delay. Whenever you start, means now if I give the start command, after five seconds, it will make the output on. So that logic I have made, okay? So it will start the output on after five seconds. Anytime, I may be giving the start command, but <clears throat> here I'm not having any, uh, means, uh, 9 a.m. or 2 a.m. I'm not comparing any time here. Okay, that hours we are not comparing, but in real time we are comparing the 24 hours format. Okay, when it should start, at what time, 9 a.m., 9 p.m. Okay, that way we are comparing that time here. Okay, in real time function. For example, street light, if you take 6 p.m., street light should be on, and 6 a.m., street light should go off. Okay, that is time-based application, okay? We have date and time. On some particular date at time, it should be on. That way also we can <coughs> write the logics here. So these are the different uh, capabilities what your PLC can handle. Apart from that, we have more advantages and more uh, capabilities what your PLC can perform. Next, uh, we'll discuss about advantage of using PLC. Like uh, PLC is a small, uh, electronic device <clears throat> means reduce space. We don't need big, big panels here because we are using software contacts, relays. We are seeing one relay or the uh, relay works, right? So there's a hardware relay, right? So nowadays we are having software relays that is in our PLC logic. We are using relay based programming language that is called ladder logic or ladder diagram, in other words, okay? So we are most of the things we are doing in software only. So there's a reduced space, energy saving, 
because your PLC is a electronic device, so it requires <coughs> less uh, power consumption, less wiring, less complexity. So energy saving, ease of maintenance. Maintenance is very easy here. If any module is not working, you can simply replace the module and you can easily identify where is the error or fault okay <clears> through <throat> the plc accuracy is there you can achieve accuracy okay means nearest values exact values also you can find out at exact time also you can start or stop the process and uh, greater reliability greater life and reliability means uh, if it is maintained properly it can work more than uh, 10 20 years also okay Tremendous flexibility is there, means uh, uh, later if you want to expand more machines or logics, okay, if you want to modify, okay, that also you can do with the same PLC. Shorter project time, within short time you can change the logic, okay, because we are using addressing here, logical addresses for each input and output in the software. So you can simply change the logic in the software, right? So you no need to change, make any changes in the wiring, in the hardware in the field, right? Within short time, you can <coughs> change the logics and download this to the controller. So your controller will execute your logic step by step, sequentially. More production in less time, okay? And uh, archiving and documentation also you can do here. Archiving means storing data, collecting and storing data. And you can take the documentation like reports, also you can generate here using uh, some database system because when we are saying archiving we are storing data we are collecting and storing data but your plc is not having that huge memory that big memory to store all this uh, data it is having only in mbs then how your plc is storing data your plc is not storing any data but this is connected to some database system like sql excel MS, uh, SS, not only MS, any other uh, third party brands are also available. So, to this database system, we have to link this PLC or to a printer like that. So, what is happening here is it is directly uh, collecting data from your PLC. PLC is showing you only real time data, only real time means present data. It does not show even as uh, one second or two second. Uh, last data also. Okay, previous data it won't display. It will show you only the present data only, present value only. Okay, we need to store that. So to store that, we have to connect this with some database system with your PC. Okay, in your PC, we can install our uh, database software which are available in the market. Then we have to link with the PLC. Okay, and we can create documentation of whatever data you are storing, you can create a documentation for that information stored, okay, as a report. There are many more advantages here, okay, you can have some remote uh, handling capacity, remote means at long distance also you can control the process. Okay, this is about some basic uh, idea about the advantage of PLC. And applications of PLC like you have many industries, for example, pharmaceutical industries, breweries industries, oil and gas, steel, cement, food industries, dairy farms, defense, power plants, building automation, home automation like that. There are many such areas where this uh, automation can be applied. Okay, so for that we are using PLCs, programmable logic control where we can handle large number of inputs and outputs and <coughs> big process, okay, you can control. I hope uh, you're understanding what I am explaining here. Okay, so for basic understanding, this is necessary, uh, what I feel. That's why I have just uh, explained this basic introduction for industrial automation. So that freshers can also go through this and understand what actually automation is.
so one more thing is like uh, people are saying with automation uh, some employees will be left off means uh, laid off <clears throat> so there will be a less uh, human power requirement in future no they are not reducing any manpower here to control or give any uh, process right to give any product they need manpower okay so this is just optimizing the system this is just optimizing the system means what are the process is there so means without uh, extra interference of your human being okay less human interface okay interference we can control the process okay there should be some people or nearby the process who are ma maintenance purpose okay or uh, handling some process manually okay <clears throat> and there is a safety here right in big machines which uh, or big objects which you cannot move by you by using this uh, machines you can move these heavy objects like in automobile industries okay so like that there are many uh, advantages here using plc so don't worry about the jobs here they are just optimizing the <coughs> system okay they are not reducing any human power okay they are not reducing reducing any jobs so these are the advantages here using plc okay hope you like this video also so uh, try to uh, send this to your friends and ask them to subscribe and i would like to say thanks for that load more videos in future